Hi, this is Lindsay Oden, Special Research Assistant at the Washington State Attorney General's Office, and this is your AGO Moment in History. In this series, our office will be releasing clips from our Oral History Project, an ongoing effort to collect and preserve the history of the Attorney General's Office as told by the people who have worked here over the years. In our first episodes, you heard Attorney General Bob Ferguson interviewing former Attorney General and U.S. Senator Slade Gordon. Now we will turn our attention to another former Attorney General, Christine Gregoire, in her interview with former Deputy AGs Jeff Goltz and Shirley Batten. Gregoire served three terms as Washington State's Attorney General from 1993 to 2005. Prior to her tenure as AG, she had been hired as an Assistant Attorney General by Slade Gordon. She was later promoted to Deputy Attorney General under Ken Eikenberry, and she was the first woman to hold that position. She left the AGO in 1988 to head up the Washington State Department of Ecology. In 1992, she launched her first electoral campaign and was elected Attorney General, and again, she was the first woman to hold that office. After three terms, she ran for Governor of Washington State and was elected in the closest gubernatorial election in American history. She then won re-election as Governor in 2008. In this clip, Governor Gregoire describes what led her to becoming a lawyer and why she chose to join the Attorney General's office once she graduated from law school. Let's take a listen. Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Goltz. I'm a retired Deputy Attorney General. I'm with here with Shirley Batten, another retired Deputy Attorney General for the state of Washington. And we are here as volunteer interviewers for the Attorney General's History Project, a project started by Attorney General Robert Ferguson to memorialize uh, the memories of uh, past attorneys general and other folks uh, in the Attorney General's office. And it's our great honor today to be able to interview our former boss, former Assistant Attorney General, former Deputy Attorney General, former Attorney General, and former Governor Christine Gregoire. So welcome and thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you. This is great. Welcome. Have some fun with this, hopefully, today. Well, let, we're going to start at the beginning. So can you talk to us about what led you to being a lawyer? Oh, well, that's an interesting story for me. I was a caseworker uh, with Social and Health Services. Um, and I had a calling to public service by John F. Kennedy. And I set out to save the world. And as a caseworker, and probably not a very good one at that, I ended up with about, oh gosh, 50 cases. And I began to ask myself, was I really saving the world, and was there any potential that I would save the world? And it dawned on me I wasn't, and there wasn't. Uh, I wasn't going to be satisfied, and so I needed something where I thought that I could contribute significantly um, to the country and to our state and community. And some people started saying, have you thought about law school? And I happened to have a, an individual in my life, which was my only father figure, and he said, I'll, I'll financially help you. You should do this. You're perfect for it. And next thing I know, off I went to law school and never looked back with regret. Uh, was able to participate in more significant change uh, through the practice of law than I think I ever would have been able to do. So I hope in some small way I've answered the calling of John F. Kennedy in public service. Mm -hmm. So you graduated in 1977? Yep. Right. And so what led you to the Attorney General's office? Well, having been a caseworker, um, the word got out that I had applied for a scholarship through the state to go to law school. I was turned down because uh, I would never return to public service in their opinion, get the Hmm, funny. Yeah, exactly. They didn't feel that once you went to law school, you'd ever come back to public service. Uh, I wish I knew who it was specifically that turned me down, that I could remind them that they did. But anyway. Um, they probably know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Um, so the word got out. I'm at Gonzaga. Uh, the Social and Health Services Division, if you will, in, in Spokane was one person and a bit overwhelmed, to say the least, and I got a call, would I be willing to come in and be a law clerk? So I served uh, as a law clerk to a gentleman who ultimately became a Superior Court judge over there, and um, ultimately, not just that summer, but that was my after my first year, but for the rest of my time. So I'm preparing my resume, um, and I'm determined I'm going to go out into the private sector, 
at that point, and I get a call from the Attorney General, Slade Gordon, who says, you know, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm preparing my resume uh, to apply and, and move out into the private sector. And he said, I'd like you not to do that. I'd like you to stay with us and become an Assistant Attorney General. I was so in awe of the fact that the Attorney General of the State of Washington had called me and asked me that I thought, you know, I died and gone to heaven. And so I said yes, and never looked back with any regret, and to this day I'm very appreciative of Slate making that call. So you never had to apply? You know, technically I think that's correct. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this AGO Moment in History. Be sure to like and subscribe to receive updates when we upload a new episode. On our next episode, Governor Gregoire describes what it was like to work at the Spokane office of the AGO, and also what it was like being one of the only women in the country to hold the position of Deputy Attorney General. Thanks. Talk to you again soon.